everyone, uh, my name's Dave. Today for this video, I'm gonna do a read through of some of my cards. So I'm gonna start at card number one and then follow its links to see wherever we end up. Along the way, we'll see how cards link and where information goes uh, and what that ends up looking like in the Zadelkasten itself. Uh, be warned though, you're gonna get an insight into the weird mind that's up here, so don't get lost. Okay, here we go. This is card number one. I started my Zadelkasten during the pandemic, so uh, the first couple of cards I wrote were from a lecture that somebody in my denomination gave about COVID. This was really early on before we really knew what was going on. And so I've titled this one, Clear Precise Communication During COVID-19. So I've written, it is more accurate to say flatten the curve than rather than shrink the curve. We aren't just trying to reduce the number of cases, we're trying to spread them out as well so that, so that the hospital system can cope. And I've written why that's important. This is important because language needs to be clear and precise so that communication is not hindered. A pandemic is no place for sloppy communication. It needs to be accurate. So there you go. And I've linked that to card number five. So let's head there. Uh, card number five, I've called how much death is acceptable. Uh, when the government is formulating a COVID response, they are making an ethical call on how much death is acceptable. A low death rate is more important than a thriving economy. Uh, and then I've written a thought. I wonder if this is a result of a latent Judeo-Christian Judeo ethic. And then I've written, I'm really pleased the government is making these decisions. I would want a government that's going to keep me alive. Uh, and then I've got a link back to uh, card one, but then I've also linked it to card 1.1 and 1.1.1. Uh, so let's just go to 1.1 to see what that says. So we're going backwards here. Uh, here I've got the heading is eliminating COVID-19 like New Zealand. Oh, I'm in Australia. Um, we aren't trying to eliminate the virus like New Zealand has. Uh, this means that there will be peaks and troughs in the spread of the virus. This is important to know about because as a leader, I need to be able to communicate clear expectations. It provides knowledge to be able to respond and not react. So that's what I've written there. Uh, and then I've linked that to 2.1. Okay, 2.1, COVID-19 and vaccine development. Without a vaccine, social distancing measures will be around for a long time. This is really important to be aware of. It leads to responding and not reacting as a leader. It allows for principled leadership. It also helps us to set healthy expectations. And I've linked that back to 1.1, which we have already read. So, which then takes me back to, which I have linked to 2.1, which we just went to. Um, so if I then read card 2.1.1, which links to that, our links can keep going. So I've written community transmission and churches. In situations where there are high rates of community transmission missions, churches are going to be affected. So we were kind of being warned that eventually churches might be shut down for a short time. This creates a real moment to be clear on what church is and isn't, and what we would obey from the government and what not to obey and what to obey. Uh, that became a really live issue across the world, not so much here for me, but uh, it was a big deal for others. Uh, and then to pick some random, I have quite a number of links here, so I'm going to go to Card 6.7 is what I linked to next. Clearly there was lots of kind of flow out of that one. Uh, okay, 6.7, this is a linking card. So I have put in the links here. Um, I put in, so it's a link between card six and 2.1.1, which I just read. So example of a hermeneutic principle. Uh, so here I have commands to sing and commands to obey authority and commands to live peaceably and commands to love your neighbour aren't trumped by one another. Prayer and wisdom are needed. Embrace the seasons, one to many rather than one another for a while. So there I guess I was thinking through what it would look like to have church online and different things like that. As it was, we ended up on Zoom. It was really great. So let's go back to 2.1.1 now. 
follow another link because I haven't linked anything to that particular one just yet apart from its primary link. Okay, so I have a link here all the way to card 176. So let's dip all the way back a long way into the future here. Um, okay, the Christian and civil disobedience is what I've written here. Um, I've got here, sometimes a Christian's best testimony to his neighbour may sometimes be to courageously resist uh, obeying God and not man, as in Daniel and Acts 4 and 5. But then I've noted that Daniel also went, went along with a whole bunch of things with his hostile government in Babylon. He stopped um, short of a complete buy into their um, anti-God culture. Um, that, that, that's a really important point to make that uh, personally, uh, I obeyed lots of stuff the government asked us to do, even if it was weird. And so now, uh, this has given me a link back again to uh, card 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. So let's see there if it's going to keep us going. This is interesting that I've ended up in a bit of a loop here, but it will eventually come out. Okay, so let's that one that we've that one won't take us anywhere. Oh no, hang on. One point one point one. This is a bit different. Uh, governments acting as servants. Uh, Australia's COVID response has bought Australia time to respond. There are enough ventilators and PPE to care for people. And this is a good example of governments being true servants and ministers. So maybe I was thinking about Romans thirteen. This means submitting to them can be a joyful thing. And then I, that has a link to card number five, which we'll go to now. And that's the how much death is acceptable, which gets us in a loop. Um, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna pick uh, somewhere else to start in the Zadokarsten and follow some more links for you. So why don't I go all the way to uh, here, card 37. Uh, I've titled this image bearing identity of creatures. So uh, if you don't read the Bible much, this is a bit of a theology thing. Um, I'm hoping to just give you an example of content if you aren't aware of the theology. But, so uh, this is a bit of a summary of Genesis chapter five, verses one to three. And it's a bit of the logical order of what happens in that passage. So God created when God created, he made the made humans in the likeness of God. He created them and then he blessed them and then he named them. And then Adam had a son in his own likeness and image. And so therefore image bearing is passed on. Um, and then I've got a quote, I think, which must be from yeah, a guy called John Murray has a quote here. The identity characterized by the image of God was maintained in Adam's offspring. And then I've got quite a number of links there. So I'm going to follow 114 that links to. So flick forward to 114. Oh, gone too far. I really love kind of flicking through. Okay, 114 is blue. Uh, that means for me, that means it's an outline card. So I've obviously drawn together a number of different cards together. Cards 37, 40, and 40.1. Uh, card 44, card 37.1, 37.1.1. And then I've got a heap of links. So I won't read out the whole outline card. But let's follow one of the links. So let's go to card 40. See what that says. I was listening to a whole heap of lectures and things at this time, I think. Uh, here we go. Hard 40 is, what are humans? Uh, so Murray, that must be John Murray. I was reading him. Uh, number one, humans are persons. Um, yep, and I've written radio. I can go with that. And therefore, they're self-conscious. Um, now, my note here is, okay, I'm aware of myself and that they're rational. And then I've gone, oh, okay, I can think things. 
Uh, and then Murray has also asserted that humans are moral and religious. Um, and what I've written here is that's less self-evident to me. Um, I, I think at the time I wanted more information about what that meant. Uh, and so what I've done then in 40.1, I've fleshed that out a little bit more as I've thought. So a human being moral uh, means a human has responsibility because metaphysical likeness grounds our obligation. The first principles, i.e. who we are as creatures, grounds our obligation. That's as in creatures are supposed to obey our creator God. And so therefore, fulfillment of an obligation consists in conformity to the image of God. That's what I've got there. And so 40.1 then links to, let's pick a random one, 51. A bunch of links for that one. Oh, there we go. I've got uh, this is into so a thing called epistemology, theory of knowledge, and things like how we know stuff. So the heading is "Are my thoughts free?" Uh, so then I've written here, which must be a quote from a guy called David Garner. Um, Every thought that I have is dependent and created. Our ability to think is a God-given aspect of being created in God's image. Therefore, when we use reason to reject God, we're using the tools that God has given us to rebel against him. We cannot think without thinking as creatures. Uh, that's kind of the comment there that I've written. And then I've got 51.1 here, which is a quote from a book of the Bible called Romans, uh, where it talks about how part of our sin is suppressing the truth about God. So that kind of is the biblical backing to what Garner's saying there. Uh, and so this one will link me to card 85. I think as I went on, I got better at linking cards. So early on, we got stuck in a loop. But here, kind of as I went on, I kind of got a bit better at linking, I think. Oh, here we go. So I've got a, a link here. Uh, again, this is from a podcast I was listening to about philosophy. Uh, it's a link to Socratic epistemology as a kind of contrast to biblical epistemology. So then I've gone, so I've written here, by contrast, Socratic epistemology, how we know stuff, comes from an innate knowledge of Plato's world of the forms. We use reason to understand and remember the true nature of things, the form. You can re use reason to arrive at this. Um, and then I've written here, this is an example of using what God has given us in rebellion to him. Um, there's lots of stuff we can learn from Socrates, but he wasn't thinking after Christ. Uh, so that one links to 211. So let me follow that one along. Keep going, keep going. Uh, here we go. I was reading um, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self by Carl Truman. And he's written, he's talked about the political man versus the idiotic man. So he's quoting Philip Reef. Um, Identity is now found in public activity, the polis, which is kind of Plato and Aristotle idealized, as opposed to the idiotic man, which means the private man. Um, that's interesting what I've got there. Just thinking through stuff and making connections in my reading. Um and that one links to 204. So gone back to 204. Uh, this one's a quote from Vern Poitras. So and a few different authors all thinking about the same stuff. And I've got human thinking and epistemology, and this is a quote from him. Um, Non-Christians do not think with utter perversion, but think with a distorted concept of law that is still close to the truth and borrows from the truth. So it's kind of picking up on the fact that we're all creatures in the image of God, and so we're going to keep thinking about stuff. Uh, I know some of you I might not agree with that, but uh, I'm just hoping to show an example of what a Zadokarsten can look like. Again, um, this is an example where I could expand on that. I could have 204.1 uh, and have further explanation of kind of why that links. Um, it's still pretty fresh in my mind, though, but it's the kind of thing maybe I could go back and do. Uh, and that one links to 47, so we go all the way back. Uh, so you can see, I probably sat down and searched through cards and said, oh, I remember writing something about that, and then I went and found the link. That's probably what um, I've done here, which brings me to to this one. So this is back to David Garner again. 
I was obviously doing a bit of reading with him. I think there's some lectures actually, but uh, so then I've got the heading here is problems with theology, finiteness. Um, as creatures, we are finite, and so therefore we cannot say anything about an infinite God, at least not anything adequately. Therefore, we must be careful not to think that we know everything about God. Uh, that's kind of important. It's good to have some humility. Uh, and then I've got 47.1, which links back to card six, which I think we re might have read before. Um, so I've got, because we cannot know anything outside of Christ adequately, we must use the ordinary means that God has given us to understand his revelation. Therefore, the Bible interprets the Bible is the only way to learn something. Um, and also there's a wider point there that um, as God's people, we can just think and it's not an unreasoning faith. Uh Okay, I think I might do one more to see where it ends up, and that takes me to 53.3. So that's interesting, 53.3, uh, which gets me to implications of source of truth. If Jesus is the source and embodiment of truth, and he is a part of a covenant, then it must have implications read back to God's relationship with Adam. Adam must have eschatology for Jesus to make sense. <laughs> that kind of takes me into a whole other area of thinking uh, uh, that I've been wrestling with about covenant theology. Um, again, if you don't know much of the Bible, you're not going to worry about that. But here it seems like the links are taking me through thinking about truth and how we understand things and uh, that kind of stuff. So there you go, that's a bit of a read through of some cards. I hope that gives you kind of an insight into what a Zadokarsten ends up looking like. Uh, your Zadokarsten might be theological like mine and you can see some links there or you might have your own content. But the point is that you end up going on a learning journey through your Zadokarsten. Uh, just as a quick word, I'm gonna start randomly blogging through my Zadokarsten, some links and different stuff just to see the interesting connections of uh, between knowledge. So if you want to have a look at that, uh, my website will be down in the show notes. You can have a look at my blog. Uh, it'll be labeled Zadelkasten or something like that when I get there. Uh, either way, uh, happy learning. <music>